We have uh, Bob, uh, pronouns are he, him, in Virginia, um, who thinks atheists have a misunderstanding about the Bible. So, hey, Bob, can you help us clear up our misunderstandings about the Bible? Well, yeah, I mean, um, I feel like it's a, a evil mindset for you to have a concept of God, your creator, right? Even I, I don't believe he's my creator, but go ahead. Oh, okay. But even hypothetically speaking, if you're talking about God, right? Okay. So he created everything. He created you. He created, and you're eating his food. You're breathing his oxygen. No, I'm eating my food and I'm breathing my oxygen. Yeah, he, he didn't go down to the HEB and, and make payments for him. <laughs> Prove that your God did any of the things that you just claimed. Have you uh, ever heard of Azusa Street Revival? No. I mean, you can look that up, but when you get the chance, you can look it up. Because what, what does that have to, how is that going to prove that God's providing me life and oxygen and food? I mean, I, I'm, I use the term hypothetically. I'm just saying hypothetically speaking in any sense. If God does exist, I, I don't care about Bob. Bob, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you your minute. Uh, I don't care about hypotheticals. If there is a God, that God can come talk to me and explain what He thinks and what He wants. And no God has ever done that. No God's. It's never been demonstrated that any God's done that for anybody at all. So um, hypothetically, well, fuck, well, getting, fuck that God and every other God. I don't care if they're okay. if they're not going to give me a minute of their time. They don't deserve a minute of mine. But I'm going to give you a minute of mine so that you can make a case for your God. Go ahead. Okay, well, that probably is the reason why you're saying fuck that God and things like this. I mean, it shows that you have an animosity towards God. No, I have an animosity towards people making claims that they can't prove, but go ahead. Oh, no, we can prove the claim. I say Prove it. It's demonstrable. Prove it. Azusa Street Revival. It happens every day. Azusa Street Revival. Watch it. It happens every day. I, I, uh, it's just not just, a place for you to just call in and advertise shit, make a case, or piss off. No, no, no. no. It's, it's just a historic event that happened. I'm just telling you about it. But it happens every day. I, if it, if how is it a historical sort of, event? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> As we go off okay. in tandem. I'm saying it's how is it an historic it's event if it happens every day? Well, every day it becomes history again. First. Well, that's when it happened notably first in history. Okay, so what does that have to... What is, how is that proof? Get, get to the point. Okay. How is that proof? The point was that you misunderstand the Bible. Like It's a lot of points that I've heard Matt say that was totally... Because you you totally overlooked the doctor. Okay, with so now now we're back to the same question we had in the last caller. What is uh -huh. your method for determining your right when you read the Bible? What's the method? Okay, well I'm not trying to uh, make myself right over anyone else, but I'm just by the Bible. Okay, so you have no method to prove that your interpretation of the Bible is right. So how do you know that Matt's interpretation of the Bible is wrong? Or anybody else's. Well, if you can't prove something right, you sure as hell cannot prove it wrong. Well, the Bible says it itself. The Bible is what I use as a standard. The Bible. Yeah, but that's the, the Bible <laughs> you, okay. The, the Bible is a book. Well, I don't care what it says until you prove it to be true. And the best you can do with the Bible is say it's historical fiction. But you haven't given us a method for you to objectively say that Matt or my interpretation of the Bible is wrong. What's your methodology? Yes, the method is the Bible. You're going by the Bible. You're uh, okay. The Bible. You're talking about the Bible. No. Let's make the this. Bible. Let's make this really easy, Bob. Let's make this really easy. What is something that's in the Bible that you think I'm wrong about? Okay, well, first, I don't think you understand the concept of justice and evil. God, God accuses all mankind of being evil and desperately wicked. I, 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 now, you, you say God no, enslaves people. You say God enslaves people, but no. I'm no. Ask, no, no, Bob. I'm asking you, I'm, you need to be more specific. I'm asking you, what position do I express about the Bible that you think is wrong? I just, what, what is it? What am I wrong about? Well, let, you just talked about the flood. Now, you say the reason why I can't quote you what you said, but you know. If you can't quote him what he says, how do you know he's wrong? Uh, can you get close? <laughs> can you get close? Okay. Well, you said, well, God flooded the world because he had a, a bad attitude or because he was pissed off. Or Actually, like Jim said that. Jim asked yeah. a question if it was an act of kindness to flood the world when you're pissed off. Is that an act of kindness? It's an act of justice. Uh, okay, Jim didn't ask whether it was an act of justice. He asked whether it was an act of kindness. If you can't listen to tell which of us said something and what was actually said, why should I care? Well, I was on the phone waiting on hold. So I uh, okay, I so once again, I'm going to ask you, I really want to do this. What am I wrong about on the Bible? 
You're wrong about just about everything you say. Like, you say that God... <laughs> well, well, thanks for absolutely fucking nothing, Bob. Are you going to be specific or am I going to go on to another caller? I want to give you the opportunity. I'd love to have a discussion. But when I ask you to be specific about something, you can't just come back, well, you're wrong about everything. I think the Bible advocates and allows slavery. Am I wrong? And I think, yes, you're wrong. Okay, open your Bible to Exodus 21. Okay, well, I don't have a Bible in front of me, so you have to... Oh, oh good, come goodbye, on. You, Bob. You, you've you've goodbye. In that case, them. you can go watch my video on my YouTube channel where I read Exodus 21 to you, where it tells you explicitly who you can enslave, how long you can enslave them, when you must let them go, and how to trap them into slavery forever. Don't you dare call in to tell me that I'm wrong about the Bible when you don't even fucking have one to check and read along with me. Well, mankind was already doing that to each other. No, nope, Mankind did these things already to each other. If the Bible... I asked you, Bob... All right, I'm going to mute you. I asked you. I said that I... My position is that the Bible allows for and advocates slavery. Am I wrong? And you said I'm wrong. And your excuse when you don't have a Bible to read along with me is that mankind was already doing that. I didn't ask whether mankind was doing that. I realized that slavery happened. I asked about what the Bible says about slavery. And I asked you to open to Exodus 21, and you can't do that. Now, which of us is, is wrong and why? Okay, um, I, can, I can believe what you're saying, what you read, but I feel like you're misunderstanding the verse. Prove it. Bob? And the position is... The position is that mankind is already evil. They do evil things. So, <sighs> Bob, does the Bible ever say that slavery is evil? Well, it doesn't say in so much words. Does, does it ever out? <laughs> does it ever prohibit slavery at all, or say that it is evil? Well, it does prohibit slavery. Where? Well, well, chapter and verse, right now. Where does the Bible prohibit slavery? Because you're a liar. Well, can I? Can I? You're a liar. Okay, well, no, I'm not. You are. You are a liar. You are a damnable liar. You should be embarrassed that you're making excuses on behalf of slavery when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So, give me chapter and verse where the Bible says slavery is wrong and immoral. No, the Bible says, "See that you do not enslave each other like you do the foreigners." So God did not want Israel to <laughs> So so you can so do, slavery do you not is okay for the right group is. of people is what don't, you just Don't said. enslave these people like you enslave other people <laughs> and you wanted me to think that that's the Bible saying slavery is immoral. You should be embarrassed, sir. You should be absolutely embarrassed that you don't have a Bible, that you don't know what it says, that you called in to talk to an actual expert who knows this shit, and you made excuses where you say that it allows for slavery for some but not others, and then try to spin this as if it's the Bible saying slavery is immoral. You are wrong. You are a liar. You should be embarrassed. Goodbye. A, a, a note for callers, come with your A game, and that means if you're going to make accusations, make them specific, and also if you're going to talk about the Bible, make sure you, that you have one, and quite frankly, it's, nice. it's 2022, and uh, I have like every Bible in the universe on this thing, Yeah. Um, and all I got to do is Google, so, you know, it, that you don't have a Bible is not an excuse, it's 2022, uh, welcome to the modern century, you know, modern times. Yeah, it's really strange. Uh, to me that, uh, granted, Bob does, probably doesn't know this, but I grew up Southern Baptist uh, primarily. I did end up going to and visiting other churches. The Pentecostal churches always had the best concerts. That's where you get to see Petra and Carmen and all these groups. Um, and I, I was, it, for the longest time, like most of the other people who sat in the church, didn't know, didn't care, had a Bible, didn't really dig in, didn't read it. Um, I just went to church like everybody else, and whatever the preacher said, that's what I said, and we, you kind of absorb. And this is why there's a thousand different denominations that all identify as Christian, um, even the, and they disagree on various things. It's because... Nobody in the pews actually spends any time studying this. And the people who claim that they do and that, and that are sitting in the pews are lying. I know this uh, because I've watched it over and over again, including in my own family. I have a family member who does Bible study every day, every day, every day, as long as it's from a small portion of the New Testament. That person has no clue what's in the Old Testament at all. To them, the Old Testament, which is the bigger part, is... God created the world, man fucked it up, bunch of stuff happened, then we get to the New Testament and Jesus. That's literally what they know. And Exodus 21 specifically goes through who you can enslave, how to enslave them, etc. So if you want to call in and say that I'm wrong about the Bible, you need to do two things. 
you need to provide, as Jim keeps pointing out, a methodology that, show, that shows how anybody can tell who is in fact right about the Bible. And you better damn well have a Bible or be able to quote it verbatim because some of us can. Oh, can I give callers one more hint? Yeah. Um, when I say that I want a objective methodology for interpreting, um, keep in mind that's simply not possible because you're interpreting a, a work of uh, a, a, a lit work of literature. And one of the things that, that is very difficult to do with a work of literature is, um, I believe it's called the authorial fallacy, but a, a literature major will probably correct me on that, is assume that what the author means is what the book means. So for instance, if you're reading Moby Dick and you want to read a bunch of stuff into it, you as the reader, it's okay for you to do that. You don't have to assume that what Herman Melville said in that book is what he meant. You can apply your own interpretation to that book. Um, so it is, it's a trick question. You, there is no objective way to read any work of literature. Now, there are objective ways to read math, and there's objective ways to read science. Those are not the same types of work of literature that I'm talking about. And so in this book, you just really don't have any, it, I mean, that's the, the reason why I keep asking, because you don't have one. It's just not possible, because it's a series of stories uh, about ostensibly one character, but who really knows? And as such as that, you, you cannot assume that what the author meant. And so everybody's going to take away what they think it means, and they're all right. That's the problem with interpretation. It's, it's the reason you ended up with thousands of denominations? Yeah, yeah. exactly.